Hi, this is Rochelle Scrapcraftastic, and today we are going to attempt to make a freehand double sided envelope for a traveler's notebook. So I've pulled out these two pieces of scrapbook paper. They are from this paper pad, Color Splash, and the copyright is ooh, 2015. So it's really old. It's like been on my shelf for quite some time and I need to use it. So, and I thought the colors were nice with this. So that's what we're gonna do. So to do this envelope, even though we made the original envelope that we used the envelope punch board for with one piece of scrapbook paper, this one is a different style of envelope. So we're gonna need two. And let's take out this notebook so that we can use it as a guide. Okay. So if you didn't see the last video, I made this double envelope using the envelope punch port and I gave the uh, measurement that I used to make this. So if you're interested in that, I will put a link to that video in the iCard up above. So let's move on to this one. So we know our books are approximately four by six. So we need to double the width at least. Then whatever is left over will be our flap to close the envelope. And then we know that the envelope, the double envelope needs to be at least six inches in height. So we're gonna start with the back piece and that back piece will be the piece that has the flaps on either side. So let's start with that. We're gonna leave the width, do I want it to go this way? No. We're gonna leave the width at 12 inches and we're gonna cut the height to six inches. Yes. So we don't want it to be too tall. So we're gonna cut the height to six inches. So we're gonna need another piece that is seven inches in height. But, and we're gonna have to trim down the width of it, but I'm not gonna trim it down yet. So this is our scraps that can, those are big enough pieces to be used for something else, of course. I'm gonna use the scoreboard. You don't have to use the scoreboard for this, but I want you to be able to see and recognize the measurements. So it's 12 inches with the 12 inch side at the top. I'm gonna to score in the middle at six inches. Then I'm gonna go over, so we're looking at it like this. It's gonna wrap around this, so six inches. So then I will count four from six and I would score at two, but this book is a little bigger. So I'm going to score at one and three quarters. So one and three quarters. Then I'm going to flip it around just because it's easier and score at one and three quarters on the other end. So we scored at one and three quarters, six and 10 and a quarter. So this is the base of our double envelope. And then I'm just gonna fold these. This is, will be a flap. This will be a flap. So now we need the inside piece, which will be, where's my ruler? The inside piece will be eight and a half inches. Okay, so then I need to trim this to eight and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna go a little shy of eight. I'm gonna go of eight and a half. I'm gonna trim it to eight and I'll show you why. And I could probably go down to seven and three quarters, but we'll go to eight. So then I'm gonna go ahead and score this one. 
I'm going to score it in the middle at four inches. Then I'm going to turn it. That's with the eight inch side at the top. Then I will turn it with the seven inch side at the top and score at one half inch and score at six and a half inches. And that's it. We only need three scores on that one. So I'm going to fold the half inch scores in like this. And those two will be what attaches to our envelope back. So this is going to create the pocket here and a pocket here. Now there's another way to do this. I've, I've thought of two other ways to do it, but this is the simplest way. Do I want the green to be up there like that? And then the blue at the bottom? I think so. Um, no, it goes like this and it goes like, mm -mm. okay. So this is what we're working with. So then I'm going to fold this this way and it should lay in the fold that we made in the center of the backing piece. So it will lay just like that. Now I could have put the tabs on the backing piece, but then you'd have to cut a piece out here, a piece out here, a piece out here, a piece out here. So I tried to make it as simple as possible so that there's a limited amount of cutting that needs to be done. And this is what it will look like. So let's go ahead and put it together. You can trim this or miter it so that there's less bulk in the fold. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to cut out a little triangle on both sides like so and like that and then I can do the same thing on the edges as well just a little bit tiny little triangle like a slither of a triangle and you're just cutting right where the the fold or score line is out to the edge so this is the shape that you will end up with. Okay. That's it. Then you can also go ahead and find the center. Let's do this before we start putting it together. Find the center of this piece and use a circle punch to put the thumb pulls in. So I just mark my center, line it up with the marks that I already have on my punch and punch so now we got thumb pulls looking looking really good and polished like that so i'm going to use some score tape this is this is quarter inch score tape i'm just going to use that On my flaps and I'm just gonna burnish that down make sure that tape is adhered to the paper well so this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to take one off at a time, but I'm going to line this up in the center here. Line it up. And fold it down so that we can get it going straight as straight as possible. Then I'm going to remove the rest of the tape. You can add a little um, wet glue on here if you want to have a little extra wiggle room if, and time to adjust your paper. 
I think we're good. And you could use wet glue to do this completely. I just use the score tape because I need to use it and because it's it dries, you know, there's no drying time involved. It's faster. Okay, so here's our envelope. This is what it looks like. And you fold it in half like this. Burnish everything down carefully, not to crack the paper. Let's do it like that. Get the air out. Okay, so then we have this flap and this flap. I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder to round the corners. I'm going to use the one half inch to make this look even more polished and finished. And again, you can use the Velcro dots that they have at Dollar Tree. Um, you can use any closure method you choose. You could even put some type of tie on it, but this is the double envelope. Let's put it in the traveler's notebook and see what we've got. Let's put this notebook back. Is this upside or downside? Hard to tell. Until I put my cover on that. Okay, so let's put this one on this notebook. See how it looks. Just slide it on the strings like that. And again, you can use decorative paper clips to hold it closed until the paper relaxes and gets used to being in the notebook so then for the pockets you can use them to store stickers receipts little notes even your sticky notes so that works it works great and it looks kind of cool next to the cover that we did and i'll put a link to this how to do this cover in the i card up above as well also before i mentioned that i was cutting this a little shorter than the full height of this space. This gives a little bit of wiggle room so that you can get down into the envelope. I probably could have gone down even a little further, but I think this is good. This is, gives you room to get in there. So that is the explanation for that. So that is the basically a from scratch double envelope for a traveler's notebook. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time I upload a new video. Be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week. Also, check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic for exclusive content and digital downloads. Visit my other channel, Journal Life's Journey, for craft videos and junk journals. You can find me across social media at scrapcraftastic. Visit my website and shop at scrapcraftastic.com. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.